I've been working on today, uh, I'm, I'm trying to eliminate, I, maybe eliminate is not the right word, but I'm trying to get all the engine related components on the airplane uh, mounted up, wired up, kind of eliminating the parts off the shelf so I can clear that segment of the project out. And one of them is fitting up the uh, forward mounted radiator setup <clears throat> that uh, mounts on the bottom of the fuselage right there at the forward firewall. However, uh, with the shroud that's on here and the two mounting holes and then the rubber uh, mounting bolts that uh, Viking provides, there um, is a very small window of mounting uh, area. So on the factory unit, they actually have one bolt that's ahead of the firewall and one bolt that's behind the firewall and it's right on the line there. And when I tried to line those up or put this mount in that area, this shroud here was actually hitting the landing gear. So what I did is I picked up a, uh, a fresh hole saw. I'm going to cut out basically a slightly larger arch right here out of the top of this shroud. And that will give me like a relief cut, which will allow me to put the radiator right up against the nose gear without actually, you know, just bumping up against it flat. So um, they do have a couple rivets here and some screws holding some angle to stiffen up this shroud. So I'll probably pop a couple more rivets right here just to keep that secure. And then I'm going to drill a hole and cut, do it like a half cut right here. And then we'll see how this fits up after that. All right, well there's the cut, didn't turn out too bad. I'll go ahead and get the Dremel tool out, clean this all up, file it down, round these edges off real nice, and we'll see how she fits. All right, so fast forward. Uh, we've got our radiator all mounted up. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see here, uh, let's see if I can pop up at the top here. A little notch I cut out there just to get some clearance. This will obviously be Mounted in one more location that's directly behind the radiator up to the fuselage. But again, we have a baggage pod going on here that's going to tie some of this in as well. Here are those rubber dampening mounts. Uh, and per Jan's instructions, uh, he uses a lock nut, excuse me, a lock washer and nut due to the fact that if you ever have to replace these rubber bushings, if they wear out, crack, and you try and uh, un do a lock nut it may be a little bit harder than just doing the uh, nut and lock washer so i decided to do that i put an an uh, washer on there lock nut and a bolt or excuse me a nut uh, on the inside just the opposite uh, you can see the mount right there um, there was some talk somebody else mentioned a good idea pop, uh, possibly throwing a doubler plate in there i may still do that it would be real easy to do just put a Cut a nice square there and put a patch over that and uh, double it up. Although I will have the um, two more of those mounts securing that to the bottom uh, down up under in here, uh, tying this in as well. So there's going to be some good uh, security there as far as the radiator goes. I just thought I'd show you this here and monkeying around with this. Uh, pass through here that I cut originally way too small uh, I talked to Viking and they said just bore that sucker out and uh, you know these plates will cover it the problem was is trying to get uh, you know a rigid piece of steel to open up when you've already got a hole drilled there I was using all these grinding wheels and everything and of course these were just getting cut down to nothing what I ended up picking up was a little $30 nibbler on Amazon and that thing just went through like Swiss cheese. You basically just put your drill bit on there and I drew a new hole or not a new hole, I traced a line and just nibbled this out, filed it down and now I got a nice big hole. So time to get that cable harness in there. That's the unit right there. If you want to know what it is, you can get it on Amazon. It's about 35 bucks. Comes in a nice case with some uh, extra bits and tips and a little unit bit to get you started. Pretty good deal. So I'm making up these uh, little uh, 
diode protectors here for the solenoids. Uh, and unfortunately, because of the two size lugs I had, I needed a ring connector that was this big, but it's actually a little big for the wire. So it's crimped on there nice. But I am going to just make sure we have a good connection and I'm gonna solder these on. Uh, normally in aircraft wiring, uh, they don't recommend doing soldering because the solder with stranded wiring can soak up into the wiring, makes it stiffer, can make it rigid and break. But since these are already rigid anyways, I'm just gonna make a nice uh, solid connection here on the end of the ring connector so that we don't have any wobbling or anything going on there. Just like that. Nice bead on there. Nice solid piece now. Get a little on the tip. Run that solder in. Get it nice and hot. Let the solder do the trick. That solder is heating up the metal. A little bit more. Boom. And once she gets to that melting point, it'll just flow into place. Just like that, right there. And there we go. So you can see how that looks now. It's got a nice connection there, even though it is crimped. It's also soldered, so we've got a nice solid connection. Here we can see those uh, diodes that I soldered up earlier in the video. Uh, those are in place here. Basically, um, pretty much have power sorted out here. This is our positives right here. These will be jumping over to the battery. Um, battery one, battery two, solenoids installed. Battery wires landed, ready for panel input uh, wires coming in here. We've got our main power bus, which is only powering the dual wired ECU wire, which will go directly to the ECU. Nothing else on this bus except for a 30 amp fuse, which jumps across and then powers up another bus, which can be used for power. Got some terminal strips here. Opposite side, we have our negative bus here, which includes two negative ground wires going directly to the battery, along with a negative wire that's running to the negative terminal on the pass-through. Let's take a look en engine sensor-wise. We've got our engine sensors installed. We've got our protective coatings on there, down here. Uh, the only thing really left to do on that is just basically zip tie this in with this bundle. We've got our starter cable right there which will also be snugged up we have our amp alternator cable jumping up to the amp shunt coming out of the amp shunt landing on the positive terminal positive some of these aren't tight yet obviously um, got our grounds in place we have our sensors in place this back one here is fairly close so i just tied it up here with some grip lock ties going through the pass through we've got our main engine harness pass through through so basically just some tidying up of the engine side wires we've now got everything on the cabin side if you will so we've got our our main engine harness here now i already ran into one small issue i got a little bit ahead of myself and uh got the uh, ecu mounted up there but it may be a little tight with the center console, so I may have to just flip that around or something. Not a big deal there, but uh, just trying to trying to get stuff mounted, trying to trying to start laying stuff out. Uh, again, on this shelf here, this is primarily going to be for ECU, and um, if I decide to use that vertical power unit, uh, that's that's the components that will be up here, as well as some accessories for the Dynon HDX screen and things like that. Again, here's that negative bus bar here. Got our two grounds. We've got our main ground going to our ground, our positive going across to the positive side. And we've got our starter relay here. So we've already started laying out everything that's gonna be for terminating basically the, uh, the center console switches, pumps, and batteries will be landing here, triggering things. We've got our ignition switch and button basically will be tying to here. So we're getting really close to having the necessary wires and parts and pieces to power up the engine and um, you know turn on pumps turn on batteries now that leads me into 
the next big thing, which is obviously the fuel system. And that's our next big hurdle that we're working on right now. So uh, if you saw the live feed we did um, a couple days back or on Saturday, we're going to be getting that header tank installed. I finally did get those fittings. So we're going to get the header tank installed. And then we're going to get our, key, or excuse me, hosing uh, run through from here, through the channel, and up to the uh, pass-throughs here. And then we'll be basically just installing our main fuel line, which runs from the back uh, manifold on the bottom of the plane, because again, we have the belly pod, so we don't have to worry about hiding it in the center console there. And uh, feeding basically fuel to the main fuel injection system, the high pressure side, which is right here. So once we have fuel there, we have a few more vent lines to connect, finish up um, the ECU wiring, and then get us those basic two batteries, two pumps, ignition switch, and alternator switch installed. We will be very close to giving this engine a first go around. Obviously, there'll be a lot of checks and balances before we get to that point, but uh, that's kind of the status of where things are at right now. I'm um, getting ready to reposition the plane in the hangar here because I've had it kind of tucked away in my little side shop right here. Um, I'm going to be putting the plane back long ways to get it kind of leveled up, get that horizontal leveled up with the fuselage, get that all fixed up there so that I can start kind of tightening down and securing things up so we can start cranking out the wings, which is uh, where we're you know, going to be putting fuel tanks and things in. Um, I do want to show you the fuel tanks. Got those back from the welder, and they look pretty awesome. All right, so let's take a look here. I uh, got both tanks back, uh, took them to the welder, and he got the bungs welded in. And, of course, we had our arrow pointing to the right side, so we know that our bolts will line up just like that. That'll put our uh, wires on the inboard side. We've got a nice recessed high quality fuel transducer fuel tank. So these tanks are ready. I got two of those all welded up and I uh, will uh, set those aside. And uh, as we prep for getting the wings done or starting the wings, I should say I already have one wing started, um, but now we have tanks that are ready to go. So we'll get the fittings, appropriate fittings put in and uh, again, next big component is going to be that header tank and fuel lines to the pass-throughs. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to end this video here. Uh, kind of covered a lot of miscellaneous things. But uh, we're moving forward. Things are progressing. We're getting closer to engine installation, completion, on to wiring, on to fuel. Things are getting exciting. Uh, lots of tasks to work on. Uh, if you're finding value in the videos, please give them a like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell because when we do go live, uh, we're trying to do some Saturday Night Lives, you'll get a notification in your uh, YouTube will pop up and say that AeroWorks is going live and then you won't miss any videos. So again, guys, Adam with AeroWorks in the AeroWorks Workshop working on the Super Duty. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your guys' support and uh, we'll see you on the next video.